Thank you. The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 2359 in the name 2359 in the name of Ash Denham on Small Business Saturday. And it's a debate which will be put uh, concluded, sorry, without any questions being put. Uh, would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press their buttons? And I would call on Ash Denham to open the debate. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This Saturday marks the annual Small Business Saturday UK. It's a grassroots, non-commercial campaign that brings attention to and encourages consumers to support local small businesses in their own communities. And I thank all the members across the chamber who will support this motion by speaking about small business today. Um, for my SNP colleagues, uh, Gillian Martin will speak about the importance of local support networks for small businesses, and Ivan McKee will speak about how to promote and grow small businesses. I'm going to speak about my own connection to small businesses through some of the small businesses my own family have run. The Small Business UK campaign also offers workshops to help inspire and support both newer startups as well as existing small businesses, so they can help provide business skills to the local communities to help them develop. Participating in Small Business Saturday is completely free for all small businesses that wish to get involved and the evidence suggests that it would be worthwhile for them to do so. The Federation of Small Businesses also supports Small Business Saturday in their aim to celebrate and support small businesses and local communities. Despite originating in the United States in 2010, since Small Business Saturday began in the UK in 2013, there has been an increase in support for small businesses across the country due to the campaign. In 2015, customers spent 623 million on Small Business Saturdays, and that's 16.5 uh, million adults who went out to support small businesses. So why do we need to encourage people to support their small businesses that are near them? Well, they're a very important part of our economy. 98% of businesses in Scotland are small. These businesses employ over 880,000 people and in turn generate over 75 million for the Scottish economy each year. Small businesses account for 42% of private sector employment and 27% of private sector turnover. And they're growing. Since 2010, they've created an additional 85,000 jobs. Because of the expertise and the culture that small business owners can bring to their communities, it's not a surprise that many local economies are being led by smaller businesses. So the top four in Scotland that have the highest percentage of small firms in their area are Aberdeenshire on 96%, Orkney on 95%, and the Borders and Shetland tied on 94%. After last year's Small Business Saturday, many small businesses saw major increases in both their sales and their publicity. Alice Malcolm Green, founder of the scented candle company Wick and Tallow, said that her takings on that Saturday were about £1,000, and she said that's double what they normally make on a Saturday. Campaign director Michelle Oven said that the British public has a great affection for small businesses, and we continue to see that grow year on year. Although the campaign focuses on one day, the goal is to have a lasting impact on small businesses by changing mindsets so that people make it their mission to support small businesses all year round." Close quote. I've been uh, planning a visit myself to a small business. The, um, there's a popular gift shop called Two Sisters in Portobello in my constituency, and I'm sure many MSPs are planning to do the same in their own local areas. But I think my interest and recognition of small businesses and the people who work in them to make them successful lies in the fact that some of my family members have run small businesses themselves, and I also worked in several small businesses run by others um, when I was at school and when I was a student. Um, in fact, my first ever real job was in a small business. It was at the Boathouse Cafe in Insto, and that's where I learned to take lunch orders from the customers and make, uh, hopefully, creditable cups of coffee when I was 14 years old. A few years after that, I worked for a small independent food store in Barnstable. But I actually think that small businesses are in my blood. My father ran a video shop in Bigger in the early 1980s. And yes, one side of the shop was for VHS and the other side of the shop was for Betamax. And that makes me seem quite old. Um, 
And I think that was also to blame for the fact that I do now have a lifelong fear of sharks because I snuck out a copy of the movie Jaws to watch when I was probably much too young to do so. Um, around the same time, my parents also had a kilt shop in Glasgow. And um, my sister and I were quite young at the time. We'd spend our Saturdays um, in the shop, sometimes getting fed ice creams to keep us busy, watching people picking out their kilts and accessories. And that's the only explanation I can think of for what happened next. A while later, uh, we moved down to England. And uh, for my first day at my new school in Devon, my mother, uh, bizarrely, decided to send me, a girl with red hair, and at that time, a Scottish accent, into my first day of school dressed in a kilt. Uh, at that point, I didn't blend in quite as much as I'd hoped to. Um, my mother finished up her working life running a small horticulture business with her husband. His horticulture skills and her design skills won them an RHS gold medal, and they toured around the UK and France selling uh, clematis at shows such as the Hampton Court Flower Show. My grandparents also ran a successful small business for many years at the latter end of their career too. Um, Anne's sweet shop in Cumbernauld was a popular destination for many Cumbernauld kids and adults in the 80s and the 90s. And I have to say that as a young teenager, it was absolutely great to have a granny with a sweet shop. I worked there sometimes in the holidays, serving the customers, and sometimes I went to the cash and carry to buy the stock. And yes, I did occasionally eat the profits. These experiences meant that I saw firsthand how much hard work, how much self-belief, and how much determination is often involved in running your own business, but also how much satisfaction, sense of achievement, small business owners derive from their businesses. So I think we should all try to shop local as much as we can. We should try to support the businesses in our local communities, because the money spent with a locally owned business is much more likely to stay in the community. We know that independent shops and other small businesses can be struggling at the moment to compete with um, a market that's increasingly dominated by big players like the larger supermarkets or Amazon and the online marketplace. If we don't support our local businesses, we will lose them. So I would urge anybody listening to go along to a small business this Saturday and have a look. You might well be surprised. Thank you. I call Alison Johnson to be followed by Rachel Hamilton. Alison Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'd like to start by congratulating Ash Denham on using time in the chamber today to speak about the importance of small businesses, and in particular, Small Business Saturday. Um, I think I first learned more about Small Business Saturday um, at an, a launch event up in Edinburgh City Chambers a year or so ago. We heard uh, from different suppliers and from Michelle Ovens about why this is so important, why it's so important that we support this event. Many small businesses rely immensely on what happens in this month in the run-up to Christmas. It really can give them a boost that sets the scene for the year ahead. Small Business Saturday has had a, a UK bus tour and the bus stopped in the grass market near here at the end of last month and gave people an opportunity to learn more. Now, there's been an increase last year, Small Business Saturday, there was an increase of 24% business compared to, to 2014. And when polled, 46% of people who shopped on Small Business Saturday in a local small business said they'd done so specifically because they wanted to support the event. Um, I had an absolutely fabulous time last year in Small Business Saturday. I went to a small shop in Toll Cross called Dandelion and Ginger. I'm actually wearing the scarf that I bought myself there last year. Um, and, you know, it's an experience that you just don't get in a bigger store, you know, in a, in a multiple chain shop. I have to say the refreshments were first class. Um, they've actually introduced me to a, to a drink that I hadn't sampled previously. I won't go into further detail, but suffice to say it's become a favourite at home. <laughs> um, but, you know, just the choice of produce. They have organic, sustainable goods, ethically traded, you know, fair trade handmade items, just beautiful, and a really warm staff who really understand what they're selling and why they're selling it. So um, that's certainly one of my favourites, and I'll return to it. In Brunsfield here, we have the, in this city, we have, the, we have one of the best bookshops that you could possibly ever pop into. It won the UK Children's Bookshop of the Year in 2014. It had been Scottish Independent Bookstore of the Year 2014 and 15, Scottish Independent Retail Award, 
for the best bookshop in 2015, and who knows what will happen this year. So I'm just using this couple of stores as examples of what we have on our own doorsteps and what we miss out if we pass them by. And I think more people are shunning big business in favour of small independence for that diversity for many good reasons. You know that your small business will have paid its tax bill or it wouldn't be on your high street. You can get quirky one-off gifts and you can help build that sense of community. You might get a better deal and you'll certainly be doing some good for the local economy. Ash Denham made the point that a pound spent in the local economy is far more likely to stay in the local economy. It's not going to end up boosting some shareholders' bank account. Um, the Nash, the uh, NEF, they've, they've printed two fabulous reports in this area, Ghost Town Britain, we learn about the demise of the high street, and recently their Clone Town Britain survey, which speaks about the deep unease people have about the increasing uniformity of our high streets. And Ash Denham is right too to say, if we don't use these businesses, we will lose these businesses. And, you know, I think it's fair to say that our own Princess Street certainly in terms of shopping, has very little to distinguish it from high streets across the globe. I think in our local high streets, we have an opportunity to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, so I will certainly be making sure that I do all I can to encourage local businesses in Lothian to register, to take part, and we as a parliament can make sure that we do all we can to publicise the efforts, uh, the friendships we make this Saturday coming in Small Business Saturday. Um, I thank the presiding officer for letting me contribute early in this debate. I do have to leave due to another um, involvement. Thank you. We call uh, Rachel Hamilton to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Today we recognise the importance of successful local economies and the role of small businesses. Being small can lead to an inferiority complex, particularly for men. However, this isn't the case for thousands of businesses participating in Small Business Saturday. They love small and they love being different. This Saturday, high streets in towns and villages will join in with Small Business Saturday. Shopping locally is so civilised compared to promotional events such as Black Friday and Cyber Monday, which consist of a scrum in a large chain store for cut price goods or a disappointing hour spent shopping on a computer for items that will tend to end up in a charity shop. That's if the website doesn't crash before you've put the items in your basket. For some UK retailers, discounting over the last weekend in November has become an unwelcome addition to sales calendar. Far from boosting net sales, it's dented Christmas trading. I'd like to mention a couple of local businesses in the south of Scotland today. Firstly, award-winning Hume the Outfitters, based in Kelso, successfully selling ladies' and men's country clothing. They also have a global online presence with a packing and processing office based within that building. Small Business Saturday represents what people like Karen and Archie Hume are all about. They are independent, they offer a personal service, and they go that extra mile. They have friendly staff and lots of niche brands not readily available on the high street. Shoppers are able to find something different. They also feel a sense of satisfaction buying locally and know that if they shop locally, they will su support a sustainable community. This Saturday, Kelso Town Centre will also offer the convenience of free and accessible town street parking. Retailers in Kelso give support to a variety of local community groups by giving raffle and auction prizes to local events and advertising at sports clubs. Small retailers in the region I represent have told me that they struggle to pay rents and bills, their cash flow is seasonal and weather dependent, and recruitment is difficult because many school leavers pack up and leave their routes to seek higher wages. It is this very lifeblood we here in the Scottish Parliament must support. Retail employs 252,000 people in Scotland and is the country's largest private sector employer. Small businesses have a key role in bridging the gap between business and education to develop our young workforce. Small retailers, like Humes, provide most of the employment opportunities in rural locations and they believe that owning a business in a small community is a two-way process. Their way of giving back to the community is to offer work experience pupils from Kelso High School a chance to trial the world of retail. The target for Scottish Government is to cut youth employment by 40% by 2021. And at present, according to the Federation of Small Business Study, 60% of small businesses don't engage with schools, but on the other hand, 38% of firms say skills shortages are a barrier to growth. Small Business Saturday can effectively open opportunities for business owners to work with schools to communicate their needs. 
On Saturday, I'll be visiting a small business called Present Perfect in Melrose. The gift shop will benefit from Small Business Saturday because their business is promoted on a larger platform than their normal advertising budget can afford. On this particular day, as I said, local authorities are fully supportive and offer customers free parking, which will incentivise shoppers to shop, shop local. Many towns have serious parking issues, and since the decriminalisation of parking, find a space has been difficult to find. And in frustration, shoppers have head, headed to places like the Fort Kinnaird Retail Park, ditching their local high street. I fully endorse Ash Denham's members' business today, and I hope that more businesses will piggyback on building on the success of Small Business Saturday to build resilient communities. I hope that this UK-wide activity will maximise the potential of small businesses in the run-up to Christmas to create local demand, sustain jobs, and boost confidence in the retail sector. Thank you. Jackie Bailey to be followed by Ivan McKeith. Presiding officer, let me start by congratulating Ash Denham for securing this timely debate and for her excellent speech. Um, as Ash Denham pointed out, Small Business Saturday is very much a grassroots campaign. You know, it's all about highlighting small business success, but also encouraging people to shop locally and particularly to support small businesses in our communities. Now, this is the third year of the campaign. I've participated in each and every year, and it's been um, more and more fun every time. And I've no doubt that Small Business Saturday um, this year will be an astounding success as well in my local community across Scotland and indeed across the UK. Now, the standout statistic that I think Ash Denham mentioned herself, but, but is worth repeating, is that of the 350,000 private sector businesses in Scotland, an overwhelming 98% of them are small businesses. So they really matter. SMEs are really important to our Scottish economy, employing as they do something like 888,000 people. So they're important to my local economy and to my high street. But I think we should acknowledge it is hard out there for them. Our shopping habits are changing. Some people increasingly prefer to shop online or at out-of-town retail centres. The consequence of that can be seen in our high streets and our town centres. So if we want to reverse that, we have a choice. Let's shop local, not just at this time of year, but indeed all year round. Let's not moon about the high street having too many empty shops and then go somewhere else to do our shopping. Let's make a commitment to spend more of our money much more locally. I know in my area, the councils are taking action. In Helensburgh last weekend, there was a hugely successful winter festival attended by thousands of people, and I have to <laughs> confess, I spent far too much money. But it was organized by volunteers, many from the Chamber of Commerce, some of them indeed elected members themselves, and it took place in the heart of the town, which was redeveloped by Argyle and Butte Council. In Dumbarton, the council is moving its headquarters into the town, bringing new footfall of over 600 members of staff to the town centre. And already, on the back of that promise, we're seeing new small businesses starting up as a consequence. So these are just some of the practical things councils are doing in my local area to help. But we also need to record our thanks to the FSB, to local chambers of commerce, to volunteers who sit day in, day out on town centre forums and support small businesses and our high streets. Because we know that small businesses provide jobs. They provide products and services too. They contribute to our local infrastructure and the diversity of shops on our high streets. So let's recognise the achievements of our small businesses in growing our local economies. Let's encourage shoppers back to high streets and to use small shops. And let's put small businesses centre stage this Saturday. Last year's event had a huge impact. It did raise support, it did boost sales for local entrepreneurs across a wide range of sectors. Consumers spent 623 million with small businesses. That's a quarter of an increase compared to the year before. But let's do even better this year. Nationwide, Small Business Saturday trended number one on Twitter that day, with something like 100,000 tweets sent out, reaching more than 25 million people. Let's do even better this Saturday. Um, and I will be live tweeting, not that I have as many followers as perhaps some of you, but I will be live tweeting when I'm going to visit Callahan's, um, a local butcher in Helensburgh 
where I'm told it's the best steak pie in the entire area, and I'm sure Maurice Corey would agree with that. I'm then going on to visit Lily's the florist in Alexandria, whose blooms have graced many a celebration. And finally, to Wilkie and Ryder, a locally owned opticians in Dumbarton. I can tell you now, I will probably end up bringing home a steak pie, some stunning flowers, and perhaps a new pair of glasses to read all our committee papers. Presiding officer, wherever you are on Saturday, let's get everyone involved in supporting our small businesses on social media, in the press, and on our high streets. Let's celebrate the incredible work of small business owners and their staff, because small businesses do make a big difference. Ivan McKee to be followed by Liam Kerr. Uh, thank you, President Officer. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Ash Denham for bringing this debate uh, to the Chamber today. It's a very important issue that we, we, we discuss. I'd like to thank um, the Small Business Saturday organisation for organising the event now in its, uh, in its third year. I'd also like to thank the, uh, the Federation of Small Businesses for the support they've given to the event and the support they give uh, to small businesses in a variety of ways um, all year long. As has been stated by a number of speakers, the importance of small businesses to the Scottish economy is, uh, is significant. 98% of businesses are what's classed as small, which is less than 50 employees, and they employ almost 900,000 uh, um, people across, uh, across Scotland. There's a couple of areas I'd like to concentrate on in my speech today. Um, first of all, round about how we, um, how we grow more um, new businesses, how we create more, more new businesses, um, and secondly, how we work with the businesses that are there to help them, to, to encourage them to, uh, to grow and contribute more to the economy. Um, now, the number of small businesses in Scotland has been increasing in recent years in private sector businesses now more than 300,000, uh, 300, um, but we've still got a ways to go. I believe that we can do more to, to encourage um, more people to start up their own businesses. Now, many small businesses are family concerns passed down from generation to generation, but many others are startups, whether it be young people recently finished their education with a good idea to go and do something. Um, it could be parents who've uh, um, raised their children and are returning back to the, to the labour market but don't want to go and work in a standard job and want to take the opportunity to, uh, to start their own business. Or it could be um, people um, that have got a bit more experience uh, later in life uh, find themselves redundant and given an opportunity to go and, uh, and, and go and risk marketing their particular skills and talents on their own account in the, uh, in the market, which is what happened to myself at the age of 40, found myself uh, in that position, started my own, uh, my own small business and one of the best things that uh, ever happened to me. Um, so I think in order to, to support that, education is important. I think we can do more to encourage the training of entrepreneurial skills, early in the education system, explain the mechanics of how to start and operate a business in our education system. And young people may not go on immediately to start a business, but they may decide to do it later in life with that knowledge that they've gained through that process. And also it gives a better understanding um, amongst the general um, population of the issues that small businesses, small businesses face. Secondly, to talk about uh, how we can help small businesses to grow, and not all small businesses want to, uh, to grow to be, um, to, to be, to be world, uh, world beaters. Many are quite content to stay at the size they are, but many do want to grow, and we should encourage that. And you have to remember that all big businesses started off as small businesses at some point in the past, because that growth process is how we generate more jobs and more finance to, uh, to support our, uh, our economy. Um, so I think, and it's also important to understand there that part of that process involves failure, and I've been involved in a couple of business failures in my time, and that's a very important thing to understand that going through that process of trying something and not working, but learning from that and coming back and doing something else is very, very important. And that can be across a whole range of things. It could be something from a high-tech um, startup that, that, that some graduates have, have figured out and leveraging on the, the, the great academic institutions we have in this country, or it could be somebody that identifies a niche market where nobody's currently operating and sees an opportunity or somebody that figures out a better way to deliver a product or service. Or it could just be by unstinting hard work delivering uh, on their, uh, on their small, uh, small business ideas and opportunity. So in conclusion, presiding officer, Small Business Saturday gives us as MSPs the opportunities to engage with small businesses in our community, something I made a point of doing my, from my business background. And I've visited many small businesses uh, through the course of the year, not just at this particular uh, time of the year and also allows us to keep the focus on small businesses um, and the important part that they play in to help grow Scotland's economy. Thank you. Thank you. Liam Kerr to be followed by Daniel Johnson. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to speak today in this debate on Small Business Saturday, and I thank Ash Denham for bringing the motion. Napoleon once called this country a nation of shopkeepers as an insult, but it is a badge of honour, for nothing strikes at the heart of who we are as a people more than our traditional high streets, and it is the small business that keeps our high streets what they are. As a North East representative with 96% of businesses in the Shire classed as small, as Ash Denham says, I'm always delighted to walk through the high streets of Inverurie, Bankery, Stonehaven, Forfar, Peterhead, places where small businesses still dominate the retail landscape, many of which have already visited smallbusinesssaturdayuk.com to sign their businesses up for free and without obligation. By visiting smallbusinesssaturdayuk.com, they have been able to advertise their business using logos and the Twitter hashtag smallbizsatuk. What this allows me as a customer to do is simply go to smallbusinesssaturdayuk.com, type in the town I'm going to be in on Saturday and find a local business to support. For example, I'm in Broughty Ferry this Saturday morning and by visiting smallbusinesssaturdayuk.com, I found Prego Boutique and Gregory Peck's Opticians, which I shall be visiting along with others. That website also allowed me to plan to, on the way back up the road, pop by the frockery in Forfar and fancy that in Edsel for vintage fashion just in time for Christmas. And I'll probably stop by Angus Video Games in Brechin to pick up something for my nephew. And smallbusinesssaturdayuk.com has businesses all over my region, right up to Bumpf, where I'm delighted to see my old friend Ian MacDonald of Buccaneer Chandlery listed. Now, as a number of speakers have said, these are difficult times for our small businesses. Internet shopping rises year on year. On year. Big chains offer ever more inventive discounts and sales. Black Friday, which didn't even exist this side of the Atlantic three years ago, now stretches to a week. And the continued development of shopping mall experiences offer not only shops, but a day out for all the family, cinemas and the like. But these businesses, our small businesses, are the lifeblood of the UK. 15 million people in the UK are directly employed by small businesses with a turnover of 1.75 trillion. So, let's congratulate the Small Business Saturday team, their corporate supporters and the Federation of Small Businesses for the incredible work they do every year on this. Just look at the stats as various, including Jackie Bailey did earlier on from Small Business Saturday last year. Across the UK, customers spent 623 million pounds with small businesses on Small Business Saturday an increase of 119 million, or 24% on 2014. Hashtag Small Biz Sat UK trended at number one all day on Small Business Saturday with over 100,000 tweets sent in support of that day, reaching more than 25 million people. And over 75% of local councils actively supported the campaign, delivering on the ground activities, including free parking, Christmas fairs, and small business networking events. And all that is why I'm delighted to be supporting Small Business Saturday this weekend. It's why I wish all small businesses a very successful day and why I urge every member of this parliament and everyone out there who can to go to smallbusinesssaturdayuk.com and support your local small business, not just on this Saturday, but the whole year round. Thank you. Thank you. Daniel Johnson to be followed by Gillian Martin. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, it's a huge pleasure to be speaking in a debate discussing small business, although it does present me with a small challenge. Normally, you have to declare your interest, and given that my former job was being the managing director of a group of small shops, um, I, I think my whole speech is going to be something of a declaration of interest. Indeed, I think probably just to set your, your disquiet uh, to one side, Presiding Officer, I should maybe actually make a disclaimer. So if at any point during my speech I seem to infer that there's only one place or one small shop uh, that you can buy your Christmas presents from, please be assured that there are plenty of other small businesses that one can do your Christmas shopping at. However, I'm very enthusiastic. I'm, I'm, it was with great thanks, I think, that we have this debate, and I would thank Ash Denham. And I think uh, Small Business Saturday is a hugely important event. I am hugely passionate about small business. I think small businesses are hugely important. Now, at this point, it's very easy to talk in statistics and numbers. But the reason I'm passionate about small business is because small businesses are about people. I think small businesses are creative. They're 
individual, they're interesting, but above all else, they're fun. They're fun places to work, they're fun businesses to run. And so I love my new job in this place, um, being an MSP, but I have to say there is a small bit of me that misses my old job, the ability to strike out and do new things, to do creative things, to make sure, to, to, to implement my innovation straight away without having to go through processes or check with other people. I miss that, but I am hugely thankful that I represent an area that has such a rich variety of uh, creative um, shops and business. Indeed, Alison Johnson, who no longer is in the chamber, name-checked the Edinburgh Bookshop, um, but there's a, a huge number as I'm going to be visiting Tippy, which is also in Brunsfield, and then later on Clementine. I'm also very pleased that, as a member of the Scottish Parliament, I'm continuing my membership of the FSB, because I think supporting small business is more than just, I think, something that we should be doing once a year. But I think there are three key dimensions where I think small businesses bring so much to our economy. I think, first of all, I think it enables business owners to do new in and interesting things. It empowers people to, as I said earlier, strike out, realise their innovations, their ideas. And in that way, I believe that small businesses are genuinely an engine of innovation. Indeed, I was quite amused uh, the other week when Keith Brown talked about the garage of his father, stuff full of all sorts of items that he was trying to sell. And it, it struck a chord with me because my, my dad was very fond of describing uh, the, the story of how he was in the late 1970s, somebody who was bringing in Russian-made stools, selling them at a remarkable price, and in his own small way, helping with perestroika at that very early stage. But small businesses are also a great place for employees. I think working in a small business is like working in a family. But they also can provide empowerment. In my business, for example, every member of staff was able to be involved in the ordering and buying processes, which if you talk to people working in large retailers, they quite simply get locked out of. Even, frankly, store managers in large supermarkets don't have much input into the ordering processes. But above all else, they're great places for customers. They're a place where you can buy innovative products, things that you can't find anywhere else. You find shops which are genuinely individual, that tell their own story in a way that a chain store just never does. But small businesses do face challenges. Indeed, I think it's worth reflecting on Black Friday. The, the name of that comes from the point in the year where many retail businesses start to make a profit. So throughout the rest of the year, they're trading at a loss. And it's only at that point of the year that they start to make money. Running a small business, running a small retail business is tough. Things like rent, payroll, and indeed rates are all challenges. And while the small business bonus scheme is welcome, I think you need to recognise that when the, the savings are capped at 4,500, I think we still do need to see that review into non-domestic rates. But above all else, technology poses a huge challenge to businesses. And I would encourage the Scottish Government to look at ways that we can support small businesses to adapt and adopt technology so all our small businesses can take advantage of that. Now, I'm running out of time. I could talk forever about small businesses, so I'll stop there. But I, I, I'm very pleased to be uh, supporting Small Business Saturday this Saturday. Thank you. And our final speaker in the open debate, Gillian Martin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to thank my friend Ash Denham for bringing this members' debate to the Chamber. And it's good to see so many members have taken part uh, and have used it as an, a good excuse to name check their uh, small business in their community and, of course, repeatedly name check websites as well, Mr. Kerr. I would like to pay tribute to a small but growing group of female entrepreneurs that I've been happy to spend some time with recently called the Northeast Ladies in Business, or NESLIB for short. NESLIB are a group set up to provide support and networking opportunities to women setting up in business. The first steps into business are possibly the most important, and networks like this offer, offer advice and support provide a vital role. Looking further afield Scotland-wide, I'd like to also point to a recent project that Women Enterprise Scotland ran over 10 weeks. They worked with spouses of soldiers in the Edinburgh barracks to assist them in setting up in business. Two of those women came to the Parliament to tell us about their burgeoning and trading businesses at the cross-party group in Women in Enterprise, which I convene and Jackie Bailey is the vice convener of. The hot housing approach of WES in this scheme has unlocked economic participation in people who would have found it difficult otherwise and are looking to roll out more projects like this to women who have entrepreneurial potential but are currently economically inactive. Perhaps amongst those women, 
are potential small business successes, successes like Ellen's Joanna Bassford, who was this week honoured with an OBE for her services to entrepreneurship and art. Joanna is the pioneer of adult colouring books and her books sell worldwide. A simple idea born out of someone's talent and passion for art, but turned into a globally operating business out of a small studio near Ellen. And I also want to pay tribute to the Inverurie Business Association. Their efforts to support local businesses have kept Inverurie as one of Scotland's most successful market towns. And being a local shopping hub and vibrant town centre despite competition from the internet and the pool of the inner city shopping centres. The local small businesses in Inverurie have launched a BID programme. The BID stands for Business Improvement District and it's a collaboration of all local businesses to work together to improve a town's environment for business and town centre improvement. And they do this by agreeing to invest collectively to improve the trading environment over a fixed period of time for the benefit of the town. I also want to congratulate North East businesses on their Buy North East campaign, which has been hugely successful in getting the message out of the importance of supporting local businesses, particularly in the run-up to Christmas. I've been particularly impressed by the work done by Fennel Media in Inverurie, who have made terrific short films, encouraging us all to support local small businesses through social media using the hashtags Eat Local, which they have showcased all the local restaurants, and Shop Local, which have showcased all the local businesses that have been involved. I'm going to be sharing these films again after this debate on my social media pages and I think a lot of towns can learn a lot from their innovative approach. Jackie Bailey mentioned about how um, Western Bartonshire Council are going to be moving their headquarters into the centre of town and that, that reminded me of a move that we've got at Aberdeenshire Council to move our headquarters from Aberdeen City into potentially in Veruri and what that could mean for the local businesses in Inverurie, we had a tremendous boost to our local economy and I would like to get behind uh, support moves to, to make that reality. Small businesses power the Scottish economy and I ask people to support them as you begin your Christmas shopping this Saturday and throughout the year. And why not start by getting yourself down to Glengarry Distillery and joining me this Saturday. I'm not going there for the reasons you think. <laughs> Although that might be part of the whole thing. But Glengarry Distillery, which incidentally is the most eastern distillery in the whole of Scotland, is hosting a group of micro businesses who are going to be showcasing all their wares in the rare fair. So that's what I'm going to be doing this Saturday to support micro businesses working in my community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Colin Kevin Stewart, to wind up. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer, and uh, I thank Ash Denham uh, for bringing this uh, debate on Small Business Saturday uh, to the Chamber. Uh, I'd like to also thank all members who have taken part, um, and a wee apology to Mr Johnson, because I missed a bit of your speech, uh, because my back went into spasm there, and that shows that I should visit uh, Small Business Dana Blythe Therapies, because uh, I haven't been for a while, and she's the best one at fixing it. Um, we've had a, a small glimpse today of the fantastic range of small businesses across Scotland uh, and it helps to demonstrate their variety and the vital contribution uh, they make to the economy. I also know now that Ash Denham is afraid of sharks, uh, that Alison Johnson won't, won't tell us what she drinks, uh, and that there is an optician out there called Gregory Pex, a big <laughs> tick for humour there. Uh, and I come from uh, a small business background. Uh, my father had an ice cream van when I was very young. It's one of the reasons why I don't eat ice cream anymore. Uh, and then uh, we had a, a family corner shop for a while. So I, I understand the difficulties that there often are um, in running small businesses. And I understand uh, why it is so important for communities uh, to support the businesses on uh, their doorstep. The Scottish Government welcomes Small Business Saturday, uh, smallbusinesssaturdayuk.com for Mr Kerr, because uh, the campaign encourages people to support those local businesses which are so important to all of our local communities. 
It's a great example of partnership working across the public, private and community sectors. Uh, and I welcome the commitment of the Federation of Small Businesses, uh, Business Improvement District Scotland and our local authority par partners, including Business Gateway, um, to this campaign. Um, last year, as has already been alluded to, uh, some £623 million pounds was spent in small independent businesses and Small Business Saturday. Uh, and I think that that is to be applauded. But beyond that spend on Small Business Saturday, we must ensure uh, that folk are encouraged to buy locally uh, uh, all the time. And Gillian Martin highlighted the current Buy North East campaign. But it's not all about shopping locally. It's also about supporting other local businesses throughout the year. Local plumbers, electricians, and other tradespeople also are deserving uh, of our support. Many folk, of course, do work tirelessly throughout the year and not just in this campaign. Uh, and we've seen recently the campaign Scottish launch in September in Haddington at Black and Gold, a company that produces cold-pressed rapeseed oil. In October, the Small Business Saturday campaign bus made its first stop in its UK-wide tour in Aberdeen, and I was there, along with Andy Willicks of the Federation of Small Business, uh, and we watched local artist Sheena Swanson uh, try to paint a picture in what was a very wet day, uh, and she did very well out of it. I know that the bus has also been to Edinburgh uh, and Stirling, uh, and uh, I know that there was much support there too. Small Business Saturday highlights a range of small business uh, in the Small Biz 100 throughout the year. Seven Scottish businesses featured from Kelso, Falkirk, Durness, Inverurie, Glasgow and Edinburgh. The businesses operated in sectors ranging from food and drink to beauty products. Like others in the chamber, I plan to be out and about in Small Business Saturday. I won't be in my own but, uh, constituency that day, though. I'll be in Perth, so I'll have to do lots of spending tomorrow uh, in my own constituency. I think I'll probably start off with Thane's Baker, uh, and uh, you can be assured that I will uh, sample some of Perth's finest wares when I am there on Saturday. I also know that the Minister for Business, Innovation and Energy has plans to visit businesses in his constituency, uh, and he has also been active in encouraging MSPs to do the same. And I hope this year builds on the success of previous years in raising the profile of small businesses, the length and breadth of Scotland. This debate has made clear just what a vital part of our economy small businesses are. There are over 344,000 small businesses operating in Scotland, providing an estimated 887,000 jobs across the country, jobs that are in local communities, jobs that contribute to inclusive growth and prosperity. But while we celebrate their success, we know that it's not always easy to run a small business. We are well uh, aware of the challenges that are being faced every day. As a government, we are committed to helping these businesses grow. We want to ensure that Scotland is the best place to do business. We offer a range of support to help small businesses through the Business Gateway and our enterprise agencies. Business Gateway offers a first point of contact for all publicly funded advice to all businesses in Scotland. Last year, it supported over 9,000 businesses to start up, estimated to have created nearly 10,000 jobs, with an, an additional 11,000 businesses benefiting from growth and local expert support. We're also delivering the most competitive business tax environment anywhere in the UK. The Small Business Bonus Scheme removes or substantially reduces rates bills for over 100,000 properties. That is why FSB has said it continues to give most Scottish small firms a competitive advantage over counterparts in other parts of the UK. We know too that many of our small businesses are based in town centres. The Independent National Review of Town Centres in 2013 helped us to set a new vision for our town centres. We want to improve the vibrancy of our towns across the country and recognise their central role in community life. Places for people to live, work, do business and socialise. 
Uh, and being responsible for town centres and housing, I'm always pleased to see uh, new housing development in town centres which help boost trade there. And I was recently in uh, Ms Bailey's constituency in Alexandria to see a new development there, right at the heart of the town centre on an area of ground which I think had been derelict for a very long time. Before I finish, uh, let me recognise the roles played by Scotland's 36 operational business improvement districts. And I'm glad to hear that Inverurie is considering a bid too. Bids play an instrumental role in coordinating and supporting local activity. And bids across the country are enthusiastically supporting Small Business Saturday. Some have arranged special events to mark the day, including the town's first ever Christmas lights event in Barhead. In my own area, the Aberdeen Inspired bid is bringing together local businesses, elected representatives, FSB, Aberdeen Chamber of Commerce and Business Gateway to celebrate small businesses throughout the city this weekend. I've welcomed the opportunity to recognise Small Business Saturday campaign uh, and to celebrate the success of small businesses across the country. I'm sure this year will build on the success of previous years, recognising the vibrancy and vitality of our Scottish small businesses. Finally, Pre President Officer, I'd like to thank Ash Denham again for bringing this forward uh, and to all members who have spoken in this very important debate. Thank you. Thank you, and I now suspend this meeting until 2.30.